Welcome back to Biology 160, Introduction to Anatomy and Physiology, section on blood. This is the last lecture that we'll have on this section, talking about uh, blood transfusions and blood typing. So, when we're talking about blood transfusions and blood typings, we first have to talk, talk a little bit about the bleeding disorders that are possible. So, in the last part of this lecture, we talked about hemostasis, which is the clotting of blood. There are some disorders that come along with this. There's something called thrombo, thrombocytopenia. This is an interesting disorder where someone does not have enough platelets. You'd normally think maybe that's not a, not a bad thing, but this does, ver this does become a big problem because we're constantly breaking blood vessels. We're constantly, uh, having to have clots form in our body. Most of the time we don't think about it. So when we get an external cut, or a, or a big bruise or something like that. We know that we've been we've been hurt and that clotting has had to happen. But just normal everyday activities, we're constantly running into things. Say you're walking through the door and you just accidentally bump the door. That can cause a, a little rupture in a blood vessel. Uh, all these actions that we're doing, just the normal everyday movements that we do, can cause these little blood vessel breaks, which will lead to clotting. And normally we don't notice it, normally we don't think about it. Unless you have a platelet deficiency, and then suddenly it becomes very noticeable. So somebody with thrombocytopenia is going to have, is going to bruise very easily. So every little bump that they get can potentially lead to a big bruise. So it can be, can be very dangerous, become very painful. And this all leads to, comes from this idea of not having enough platelets. In severe cases, you're going to have to have platelet uh, replacement, so um, receive platelets through some sort of transfusion or something like that. There's also something called hemophilia that is not as common as thrombocytopenia, but also happens. And in hemophilia, what's happening is you're not you're missing some of the the clotting factors. Uh, so the clotting factors are, again are those factors that are uh, essential in the cascade that leads to to blood clotting. And there's around 10 factors. If you're missing any of those factors, that's going to stop clotting from happening. So there's hemophilia. There's a few different types of hemophilia depending on the clotting factor that you're missing. But in any case, it's, it's going to be very bad because you're not going to be able to clot. And so if you get hurt or if you have an external wound, it can lead to a lot of bleeding, excessive bleeding, it lead, lead to anemia and the problems that are associated with that. This one is passed on. It is hereditary. And it's interesting because it's passed on on the X chromosome, if you're familiar with genetics. So uh, males have, so in humans, males have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. And females have two X chromosomes. Because it's carried on the X chromosome and it is recessive, Meaning that if there's any, if there's a, an X chromosome that doesn't have this gene, then it's not going to be present. So let's say that a female has a, has one X chromosome that has a hemophilia, as in here, and one that does not, then they will not have hemophilia. They will not show the symptoms of hemophilia. So in order for a female to have hemophilia, she has to have two recessive genes in order to have the disorder. A male, on the other hand, because they only have, because males only have one X chromosome, you either have hemophilia or you don't. There's no uh, situation like this one, which we would call a carrier, where you, you do not have it, the female does not have it, but she can pass it on to her, her sons because of that recessive gene there. So, hemophilia is a, is a hereditary bleeding disorder. It's more common in men than in women because of this situation here, where men either have it or they don't. Women can be a carrier and pass it on their sons. Um, this became very famous in Europe, where for a long time, the, the ruling classes of Europe weren't able really to produce a, a, a prince, a king, because a lot of the males had hemophilia. And this came be, because of um, intermarrying between the different, um, 
uh, ruling monarchies within Europe. So they all became related because princes had to miss, marry princesses and so they had to go to these other uh, courts in Europe in order to, to find uh, someone to marry. And so we had this lot of intermarrying led to this this rise of hemophilia that has been traced back to um, Queen, I believe Queen Elizabeth was the first one. She didn't have it, she was a carrier. And they can follow, kind of follow it back through this this pedigree. So these are some examples of bleeding disorders that can happen. As we as I mentioned before, if you lose 15 to 30 percent of your blood, that can cause weakness, can be very bad. Over 30 percent can lead to shock, can be fatal. And so, transfusions are are a way that we've come up with medical technology that allows us to replace blood. Our body will replace blood naturally by itself, but we can't re we can't produce a lot of blood um, immediately. So we we can only produce you know, ounces a day as opposed to if you, lo you lose pints or quarts, then you're going to have to replace a lot of blood. So transfusions allow us to do this. But transfusions, you have to be careful because transfusions have to match up, meaning that the blood type of the person you're giving the blood to has to match the blood that you're giving them. And I'm sure you've heard of blood type before, but you may not be... Uh, may not understand exactly what's going on in blood types. So we're going to take a little bit of time here and talk about what it means to have a blood group, have a blood type, and uh, figure out what's going on here. So there's something called an antigen. And we'll see this again in the immune system lecture. We'll talk a lot about antigens. But essentially what an antigen is, is it's something that can be bound by an antibody. If you have a cell... All of our cells have little antigens attached to them. And I'll, I'm just going to draw them as kind of these little balls and sticks. And these antigens are important because this is kind of like the fingerprint of a cell. So your body knows which cells are yours because of these, these antigens, because of these fingerprints that are sticking out on, on the cell. So as your white blood cells are running around your body looking for for foreign bacteria, viruses, and, and damaged cells and things like that, they're looking at these antigens. If the antigens are yours, then they leave the cells alone, which is good because we don't want our white blood cells to be attacking our own cells. We only want them to attack the foreign ones. So this allows the, the white blood cells to tell, okay, this cell is ours, it's okay, this cell is not, it must be a bacteria, it must be foreign, let's destroy it. So these are, antigens are very important in understanding in the immune system and, and being able to fight off infection and things like that. We have about 30 different antigens that are stuck on our red blood cells. Only, only two of those types, two types of antigens, not just two antigens, but two types of antigens become important in blood typing. And these are the ABO system and the RH system. So we're going to look at what's happening in each of these here. First of all, the ABO system, which is the one we're most common, commonly think about, the A blood type, the B blood type, and the O blood type. Okay, so blood type is genetic, meaning that you inherit it from your parents. And so you, you can find out, uh, if you know your parents' blood type, you can find out the possible blood types that you might have, depending on their blood type, and uh, also the, the blood types of your of your brothers and sisters. There's a few different possibilities here. And I'm going to put this up in the corner here so you can see this. There's something called a genotype and something called a phenotype. A phenotype is basically your outward appearance. So if you say that you have a blood type, what that actually means is that you have two, there's two different possibilities here. You either have what's called AA blood type or AO blood type. Both of them just basically mean A because A is a dominant blood type. O is a recessive blood type. So if you have blood type AO, the A is dominant over the O, and all you see is the A. And so this is the same for somebody that has B blood type. They either have BB or BO. And what this means, th why this is important is because this is relating to genetics. So because you receive this from your parents, you receive one, what we call a lil, or one blood type from your parent, from each of your parents. So if you're one parent, say your father, is O blood type, that means that, that means that his blood type is OO, as seen here. So that means that all he can give you is an O. And let's say that your mother's blood type is AB, she can either give you an A or a B. So you basically have two possibilities. You're either going to be AO, which would be A blood type, 
or you're going to be BO, which is B, which we would call B blood type. So depending on what your parents have, they're going to give you a certain blood type. And these are all the possibilities. So AB, A blood type, which are two possibilities. B blood type, two possibilities. AB, that is, that's the only possibility because you received an A from one parent and a B from the other parent. And then O blood type, which is actually OO, meaning that you received an O from each parent, but we just call this the O blood type. All right, so this is this is very important because um, depending on your blood type, that's going to depend on what determine what type of blood you can receive from other people. The reason this is important is it comes back to the antigen. So, if you have A blood type, let's say you're in here, so you have A blood type. What that means is your red blood cells have A antigens all over them which is just some sort of marker, right? Telling your, your body that this is your blood type. If you have group, if you have B blood type, you have B antigens on your red blood cells. If you have AB, then you have both A and B. So this is a co-dominant. Both A and B show up. So you have A antigens, these little purplish ones, and these greenish ones, these B antigens. You have both. Then if you have O blood type, you don't have either of the antigens. So your, your white, your red blood cells don't have any of these, just these types of, of antigens. So those are our three possibilities. The reason this is important is because your body also produces antibodies against other types of antigens, against foreign, uh, blood types, against foreign cells inside your body. So if you have A blood type, that means that your body is actively producing Antibodies, which are immune system proteins, which atta will attach to and attack these cells. So you are actively producing B type antibodies. So in other words, if somebody gives you B type blood, notice how these antibodies are able to attach to the, the B antigens. If someone gives you B type blood and you have A type blood, your antibodies inside your blood are going to attack those those red blood cells, those foreign red blood cells, and that blood's not going to do even do you any good. It, it can not, can lead to a lot of problems. Same thing is true, but opposite of B type blood. So you're producing A type antibodies. So if someone gives you A type blood, you're in trouble. Okay, your body's going to attack that type of blood. Notice in A B type blood that you're not producing any antibodies. The reason is because you have both A and B antigens. So if you were producing antibodies against B you would attack your own cells. If you're producing antibodies against A, you'd still attack your own cells. So you don't have any antibodies against any of these other blood types. O, on the other hand, has both types of antibodies. So you, you would attack any A, B, or AB type blood if it was to be given to you. So this becomes important when you're trying to give somebody blood, trying to give them some sort of transfusion. If you have O type blood, Notice you have no antigens. That means that you could receive only, only O-type blood because you're producing antibodies against anything else. So you can't get A, B, A blood, B blood, or A, B blood because you'll, you will attack it all. So if you have, have O-type blood, you can only receive O-type blood. But you're called the universal donor because you can give your blood, your O, blood cells to anybody else. Because notice, there's no antigens on the O blood cell. So if you give your blood to AB, it doesn't have any antibodies anyway. But if you give it to, to B type blood, the A antibodies can't attack, can't attack the O type blood because there's no antigens to attach to. So you're the, you are the universal donor. AB blood, on the other hand, you are called the universal recipient because you don't have any antibodies, no antibodies. So you can receive O-type blood, your body won't attack. You can receive B-type blood, no antibodies to attack it. A-type blood, okay. A-B-type blood, okay. So you can receive any blood type, and so you are the universal recipient. However, you can only give blood to, um, you can't give blood to anybody else. So everybody else has antibodies against one of your types of antigens. So you can only give blood to somebody else that has AB. So O-type blood is a universal donor, but can only receive O-type blood. AB-type blood is a universal recipient, but you can only give your blood to somebody else that has AB. So that's how this system works. Very interesting 
uh, system of blood typing. So if you want to find out your blood type, the way they do this is they have, they'll take a drop of blood and then they have antibodies that they put in that blood. And what happens when these antibodies attach to the blood, they start to pack it together. We call this a glut- glutination. It clots, basically. And uh, so you can tell, depending on what it clots with, you can tell what type of blood it is. So if they put in a drop of blood, they put in antibodies against B, anti-B antibodies in there, and it clots up, then you have B-type blood. And if they do it with A, then you have A-type blood. If both of them cause clotting, then you have A-B-type blood. If you don't have any clotting, you have O-type blood. So that's basically how they would, how they would figure that out. Here's a nice little flow chart over here on the left side that shows this compatibility. So O can be given to anybody. A can only be given to AB. Well, AB can receive from anybody. O can give to anybody. Then you can see how the others are related. So O can give to B. O can give to A. A can give to AB. B can give to AB, etc., etc. So it shows how it all works out there. Let's look at the RH factor just a little bit. Similar to the ABO system, but in this case what's going on is that there's a there's a number of there's a number of antigens that come into into play here, but we only call this plus or minus. So for example, my blood type I'd say is I I call it B positive. The B is the blood type we were just talking about, the ABO system. The positive is this RH factor that we're going to talk about now. They are two different systems. We always talk about them together, but they are very they are very different separate systems of, of blood typing. In the RH factor we only have positive and negative blood types. Um, what happens here is is your body isn't actively, so in the ABO blood system your body is actively producing those antibodies against the other types of blood, of, of blood types. RH blood type is only produced after the blood comes in contact with those with those antibodies. It's interesting. It's called Rh factor because it's originally found in a rhesus monkey. So rhesus system. So a rhesus monkey found out that humans have the same same system of blood typing. This positive and negative. So only after your body comes in contact with this other blood type does it become a problem. So um, if you have negative type blood then your body, once you, if you come in contact with that positive blood, your body will start producing antibodies against that positive type blood. But only after, so say you get one transfusion where you have negative blood, you'd be okay. Second transfusion, if they give you positive blood and you have negative blood, your body's going to start, it's going to have those antibodies produced and it's going to reject that blood type. Usually, this usually isn't much of a problem. The main place it becomes an issue is with uh, pregnancies. With mothers who are have a negative blood type and fathers who have the positive blood type. Because what this means, the way that the genetics work out, and I won't, we won't really discuss all the genetics here, but you can see down here all the possibilities, but just like the ABO, you receive a, uh, an allele from each parent, so the negative is recessive-recessive. If you have any dominant alleles, then it's going to be positive type blood. So positive is much more common, but if a female has negative type blood, and the father has positive type blood, that means that the, the baby in the womb has a possibility of being one of these positive types, type bloods. Because the mom would give it a recessive gene, but the dad would give it a, a, a dominant gene, possibly, depending on his, his genotype. And so the baby would have, uh, could possibly have positive type blood. What that means is the mother would start producing antibodies against the baby, trying to destroy the baby, which is not a good thing, obviously. But again, it only happens on the second, it would be the second pregnancy where this happens. This used to be a big problem. They, you actually had to have a blood test before you could get a, a marriage license to make sure, to see if you were compatible, to see if you had this problem with the negative, positive type blood. And again, it's only when the mother is negative. If the father is, is negative, it's not a problem. Uh, because the mom has positive type blood, so she's not going to produce antibodies. So it's only if the mother has negative type blood. Um, today though, if if they know that this is going to happen, you can just receive a shot um, to to make it so these antibodies don't attack the, attack the baby, and, and there's no issues with the pregnancy. But if, if for some reason you don't know, and the pregnancy begins, uh, for example, this can this can happen if someone has a 
an, a uh, miscarriage, which which can happen without the female knowing. And the miscarriage happens. The baby had positive type blood, so the mom starts producing these antibodies, gets pregnant again. The baby has positive type blood, and it's already starting to attack the baby. But again, rush to the hospital, get a shot, and and everything works out. So not as much of a problem anymore. But historically, this this could cause a lot of problems. Okay. The last thing I guess to mention here is, is how we develop, how our blood system develops. Where our blood is produced differs from when we're a child to when we're adult. So when we're a fetus, the liver and the spleen produce a lot of blood. But as we get older, the, blo- the bone marrow takes over the production of blood cells, as we talked about. Um, hemoglobin differs a little bit from, from babies to adults. And you can also get something called jaundice. And this is happening when the blood, the baby is not able to get rid of the, the breaking down of the red blood cells, the waste products of the breakdown of red blood cells, which is the hemoglobin, uh, the bilirubin. And so the, it builds up inside the blood and you get this yellowish, yellowish tint to the baby. And so, um, you may have seen this before in babies that have been, have just been born. Usually not a big problem. But it's, it's something that they have to take care of. Um, I, I guess I'll mention the fetal hemoglobin. It's a, it's a different type of hemoglobin. It's able to catch oxygen more easily. And then there's there's various things that can happen with the blood. Uh, losing if you can be iron deficient. So iron is very important in in blood. Um, if you don't have enough iron, you can become anemic, and uh, that can happen to, for example, even just women as they go through their monthly menstrual cycle, losing too much blood or just losing blood and not being able to replace that iron. Um, they can become anemic. Uh, leukemia can be a problem. So there's a lot of a lot of things that could go problem with the with the blood. All right, and that's the end of this section of our lecture. Thank you.